uh, that kind of answers my first question already. After the other night, how are you? It's still dreadful. Still blazing. Um, I'm, pr I'm probably at the level that I was when we drew all know that Stephen is not a goal on the last day of the season. That's how I can think of. You know, and I, I did have the conversation with Mike Jones and I feel for him. I do. You know, as much as I, much as I feel for myself, I feel for him because, you know, this is it's been a reoccurring theme this this season, not just for me. And you know, human error, you can't. You just gotta accept it. We make more mistakes than the referees. You know, managers and players make more mistakes than the referees, but their their mistakes unfortunately impact on us massively. And we just it's not isolated incidents that hurt you, it's the the ongoing steady drip that you feel as though you know we it's just it is bad luck and I'm not stupid enough to think that there's any other hidden agenda. Um but it's it's just so frustrating when you see so many go against you and not many go for you. Um but you've just got to play through it, you know. We won't be the only team who'll suffer from bad decisions this season. Um, and as I said before, I'm not, it's not done deliberately. You know, they, people don't do it out of malice. It's just that on it. You know, they, when you when you go back to it, you know, a referee has a couple of seconds to make a decision. Possibly could take a little bit longer to make that decision. That isolated one, but they, they only have a few seconds to make a decision. And uh, you know. They're going to get some right. They're going to get lots right. They get more right than they get wrong. But the ones that they get wrong have a massive impact on our lives. Not just the game. You know, your whole mood. The mood of the fans, the mood of the, the players, the mood of you know the whole club. So, listen, we just have to hope that if we keep working hard, eventually we'll get into positions where we're going into their box and we're not... We're not giving pens away, we're, we've got chances of getting penalties or scoring goals, and that's what we've got to, that's what we've got to try and up. When you spoke to the head of the referees, did you get the expected apology? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want an apology of him, because he, he's got nothing to be sorry about. Uh, but he empathised with me like I knew he would. And, you know, when you see it again, it's debatable whether Seamus has actually touched the ball. So to say he hasn't played the ball, that, you know, is, is quite remarkable. But, you know, it's gone now and we have to look forward, not backwards. Um, and, you know, you, you've just got to try and put a lot of that out of your mind. It's been difficult for me, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's been difficult for me. I've been, I've been trying to switch off from football for a day or two when I can't. You know, trying to, trying to think about other things, but it's very difficult. Um, and when you're so close, and we are so close, and just a, if half of the decisions that we've had hadn't have gone against us the way they have this season, we'd probably be in the top three. You know? And that's that's the frustrating thing. But you know, it's you can't go on ifs and buts. You've just got to look forward, and you know. I remember the season we won the league. We had very, very, very few decisions against us. We had a couple that went in our favour, but not many went against us. Didn't have that many sending offs, if any. Can't recall. We've had five this season. Probably one of them have been justified. So that's that's where it's frustrating. You said you'd lost faith in the appeals process. Have you bothered? Uh, it's such a it took a, a lot of to and fro in my own mind what to do. I think I owe it to the player. You know, it's that blatant. Um, and I hope that they, you know, they see it like the heads of the referees have seen it. The, they see it like any referee who'd look at that would know. I think, you know, if the referee in question looked at it again, he'd, he'd know he'd made an error. And, you know, possibly going forward, Maybe the appeals process should include some some aspect of that. You know, if you've got people controlling the referees, why aren't you asking for their input? Um, 
you know, they're specialists. So when it goes to the appeal, I think they should be involved. But listen, I don't make them rules. I don't make them decisions. Other matters arising from the other night. How's Nathan Baxter? Um, it's settled down a little bit. Still sore. Just have to see how it goes. Um, wait for the results of the scan, and then you know take it from there. But we've got a perfectly good replacement in Toby, you know. And, you know, I know it's very difficult to come on in that position. You know, on a cold, very cold night. I'm not saying his feet were cold when it goes down that road, but you know, it's a very cold night, and you know, yeah, it's not like a normal player warming up. And cold, it's a specialist position. Um, and he made a wonderful save for Toby in the game. So, um, you know, if Toby has to play that thing, no, no problem. You anticipate a couple of weeks for Joe Pritchard. Is that likely to be the case? I don't know yet. I'm going to speak to Joe and the medical staff about him um, today, and we'll, we'll get more of a handle on him probably by the end of the week. You said you're generally a bit fed up with football. Would you have liked to have a longer break between games, or is it get back on the horse and get Swindon here and, and try and get it out of your system? Probably a ten-year break to me. Uh, you want to get back playing, don't you? You want that the opportunity to win, um, but winning games—it's there's so much involved in winning the game that you just gotta you gotta do everything in your power to do that. And you see, your night games can quickly get taken away from you. That was that, that game that your night was very reminiscent of the um, the Shrewsbury game. A couple of years ago, when we, we kicked in and then got uh, got a man sent off, and the game changed on its head. That was very, very similar to that. You've not won at home for over a month. That's an unusual situation for, for this club. Is that a concern? Not just not winning is a concern whether you're home or away. To be honest, uh, we we were mindful of the fact that we didn't want to go on a poor run. We only pick up a couple of points from six or seven games and. You know, we're two points off four games now, and probably merited more than that from our performances, but not much more. Um, and we've just got to, got to get back to playing the way I know we can play, which we can. And we showed flashes of it, we showed an unbelievable spirit in the second half the other night, and that's what we should be coming away talking about. And I've probably banged on a bit too much about that, about the referee decision this week, and that's probably deflected away from. The gallant effort that the players put in, but I don't want to be gallant in defeat. I want to be gallant in victory, and the players are the same. So, you know, hard work will always give you the chance. But we've got to start winning. We've got to start winning games. You've beaten Swindon once this season at, at their place. You're still looking through the double over a team, although I appreciate you've not played. Yeah, it's the only one who's done a double over us, don't you? That's right. Um, what kind of a change in fortunes has John Sheridan brought about at Swindon? I, I like Shares, he's a good lad, proper football man, um, says it how it is. Um, not everyone's cup of tea, he's my cup of tea, but he's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, and, you know, what I, what I do know about them, uh, they're capable of giving anyone a game, they were unlucky the night. You know, shouldn't have lost the other night. So, um, it's going to be a tough game. Pitch is looking better though, played better um, through the day. Um, you know, we've got to, whatever team we put out, we've got to just go all out to win. Like we did during the night, to be fair. We played, we picked a very, very attacking side during the night. We went down to 10, we carried on attacking, you know, we, we kept two up front. Um, and I think we're going to have to do that to the end of the season. We're going to have to pick up wins if we're going to get in the playoffs. Do you pay attention to the league table and where you are and what the situation is at this stage or is it more important to get back to getting the results and then see where that takes you? No, you're always looking at the league table. Um, any manager who says he don't at this stage of the season is a liar. So, um, but you're right, we have got to get back to, to winning. And then, you know, if you win, there's that many teams all hunting for prizes. Uh, you know, you're going to get some results going your favour when you come off the pitch. And you're not going to retire after 
after what he said the other night, although I am interested in how long you gave yourself. Did he say 12 years? <laughs> you going to be Roy Hodgson? He said 12 years, yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. I don't think I've earned as much money as the, the players, the managers you can retire. Um, but uh, richness isn't all about money, is it? It's about, it's about uh, quality of life and enjoying what you're doing. And as much as I hate my job at times, particularly on Tuesday night when he had me rant, uh, I still love it. And, you know, I love the club and I love everyone uh, involved. And I love trying to win games. And I think, I think that's probably, I think probably for most of my life, probably been a driving force. Even after all these years, is it still surprising to you that you can get caught up in the moment? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Caught up in the moment like that. Yeah. You said after 55 seconds, I don't want to talk about the referee and then oh, yeah, talk, and then, and then talk about it for, forever, yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, I have calmed down, you'll have known that over the years. Uh, Danny and Suzanne think I have one word answers when I give six now. But um, I think once you lose that passion, I think, you're, uh, I think you're on the way out anyway. So I don't think I'll ever lose that. I've, I've learned to control my emotions a lot better. Um, and I, I, might have, I might have been a lot more vociferous in me in the uh, protestations during the night than I was. Um, so that's, you know, I didn't get a yellow card. I didn't get, there would have been plenty of managers who would have been sent to the stands for them. I was just going to say, John Coleman 1.0 had a welcome the social distancing at times. Yeah. I've said that though, you can get sent to the stands, but you know. You were in the stands anyway. Well, you'd be able to coach from both sides like they did.